Hey everybody, I wanted to go through some of the squat progressions that I like to use with my rehabs. Now initially, when you have somebody, whether it's an ACL or it's just a, a knee sprain, ankle hip, the first thing I like to work on is depth. So, you know, we start going just from a, a good old fashioned mini squat or a quarter squat, but eventually we have to progress that. So I like to do a sit down squat from there. So you can use a chair, a bench, just about anything. Sit down squats are a great way to progress because it gets them deeper, but it gives them a safe place in the bottom of the motion. Now from there, I like to get them into you know, a full depth squat, but not everybody is able to do that. So there's a few ways that we can manipulate uh, the squat to be able to get a full depth squat. And one is using a heel lift. All you need is something simple like a two by four. You don't need to get a slant board, but slant boards work also. Anything that you can raise the heels up is going to shift their center of mass forward. It's going to reduce the dorsiflexion that they need. Now, if you can't get a deep squat because of dorsiflexion, use your joint modes, use your soft tissue um, to get that joint moving. But using a slant board is one way that you can get a nice full depth without loading the ankles as much. Um, it's also great for the neuromuscle to control. Lots of times our athletes don't have that control in that deep position. So that's one way. Another way, simply using a dumbbell to offload, uh, basically shifting the center of mass forward. And what you do, as they squat down, they just bring their, uh, the weight forward. You need something light. Again, it's shifting my center of mass forward, which allows me to be able to stay more upright. Weight needs to be heavy enough to shift their center of mass, but not so heavy that they can't perform the, the exercise. Once I have depth, I then like to add some weight. So, ways you can do that is a simple front squat with dumbbells. I don't like doing uh, dumbbell squats by your side, because that really drags your upper body forward, right? So I like to do a front squat with it, so they just hold it in this position, and they squat down. This is going to really engage the, uh, the upper back, the scapula, uh, the trunk as a whole, you can see it from the side. Now there comes a point where if it gets heavy enough, it's hard to hold those dumbbells there. So then you can go to uh, a goblet squat. So now we're just getting heavier, but it's the same thing. So they're going to hold it in this position here. This is really going to also bring in a little bit more of the anterior chain. It is shifting my center of mass forward, but it's bringing in a big element of thoracic spine. Extension. All right, some other ways that I like to um, progress the squat is with an overhead. So you can use a stick, a dowel, a good foam roller works also. Um, so you can easily, if they have the depth for it, and if they have the thoracic motion, have them do the overhead squat. But I typically like to start with an overhead sit-down squat. This is it. Um, allows them to shift back a little bit. Just kind of teaches them that motion. Um, so that's a great way to progress that. Then you can go to a lightweight. So I just have a 25 pound plate. So even if they've been doing full depth overhead with the dowel, I was going to sit down spot when I add a weight to it. So that's how you can progress that. You can even have them take that to a full overhead. Alright, another thing I like to do is um, go to a unilateral load. So, basically when we were in that front squat earlier, same thing, but now you're holding it on one side. This is really bringing in an element of core, it's really working that frontal plane, the transverse plane. Um, so even if you're not increasing weight, having it unilaterally makes a big difference. Um, lastly, I like to do an overhead unilateral uh, squat. So nice light weight. I like to hold it in this position, similar to a kettlebell. If you have kettlebells, that makes it a little bit easier. But it's the same thing, it's just an overhead. Squat, and you don't want to go heavy with this. This is a 20 pounder for me. That's pretty challenging. 
So that's some of the squat progressions I like to use. Hey everybody, I wanted to go over two common hip abductor exercises that we all use. Um, I want to tell you about ways that they drive me insane watching other clinicians teach their patients how to do it wrong. So the first one I'm going to show you is the sideline hip abduction. Um, now most people do this just like, you know, like this. Now the problem with this is if you're not making sure that that leg is in line with the body, if it's drifting forward like you commonly see, that's going to engage that tensor fascia lata, right? And we want to make sure we're engaging the glute. So just to show you from the side, again, we should be in a straight line. If not, if anything, we might even go a little posterior with a little external rotation of the hip. All the time I see patients doing this, the leg in front, very easy if you're using that tensor, all right? We want to engage that glute. So make sure they're, if nothing else, right in midline, but I like to actually have them go slight extension, external rotation with it, much harder. Um, one way that you can have them do that is against a wall. This is a great cue that you can give them. That way if they're at home, they have something to give them that cue. So I like to make sure they're backed all the way up against the wall, uh, flat. Their bottom leg comes forward, foot on the wall. And now they're going to engage that glute to push into the wall slightly, toes slightly up. And they're going to do hip abduction from there. So this is a great way that they can do it at home to ensure they're not coming in front and engaging that, that tensor, right? So a simple little exercise. Makes it much harder. Try these out on your own. The last one that I want to demonstrate to you is the uh, banded side step. Again, it's an exercise that we all have patients doing, but I commonly see it being done uh, without the best way. So, what you want to uh, be sure of is that when they're doing the exercise, that they're not getting counterly. So if I'm sidestepping to my right, I see all the time the patient leans to the left, right? So they shift to the left and then step. Shift to the left and step. Now when you shift to the left, or when you shift the, the opposite direction, you're taking your center of mass and you're stacking it on top of that joint, which makes this hip not have to work very hard. You can actually even palpate your muscle there, you know, see what it feels like, when you don't get counter lean, then also see how much or how soft these muscles get when you do that counter shift. Everything relaxes and makes it much more easy on the patient. And if you're not giving them that, that cue to stay nice and on, you know, the moment this foot gets up, they're using this leg to transfer their body over and same thing coming this way. Um, so those are two ways you can take exercises that you're already doing and by using simple cues and fixes make it a much more effective exercise. All right, and I want to make one more point about that side step, is that you have the band around the ankles. We all know that makes the exercise more difficult. But if that's the case, you got to make sure that the, the patient is still driving with the femur, all right? Because what we'll see is they'll reach with that foot. And when you do that, it actually internally rotates that femur, right? And it's going to make you, again, engage the, the tensor, more than it does the glute. So if they're, they are going around the ankle, you just gotta make sure that they're driving still with that femur, with that knee. And they're not just, again, reaching. And lots of times we'll see those two together. They'll counter lean and reach with the toe. So um, I don't know why this helps, but, but I found with patients, if I have them do the same movement with their shoulders so they externally rotate, that helps them to uh, engage the glute of the femur and to drive with that leg versus doing that toe reach. 